Hi, 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 there we go. Welcome back to another episode of Kyber Dreams TV. I am your host, Maurice, Mr. Property John. People, I am so tired, it's not even funny. This baby is just eating my nights. But guess what? You have to give the people what they want. So, we're back for episode 7. My gosh, time show flies. We only have 3 more episodes to go. And this episode have just been awesome, I must say. Not to toot my own horn, but they're really good. I, I really like them. And people are meeting me and they're saying, Yo, what you're doing, keep doing. The last time we were inside, we talked about what is the real cost of buying property in St. Vincent. And I believe that video helped so much people. They did not know the different fees that are attached to buying property. So people will come out and say, okay, I want to buy a piece of land, $60,000. And they will go and they will find a piece of land at $60,000, not realizing that there were costs attached to it that will take the property beyond that $60,000 mark. The review that I've, I've gotten from, from people watching that video, why did you not do a breakdown of buying a house in St. Vincent. So I say, okay, I'm going to use this episode to do accomplish a few things. Not only am I going to break down buying a house in St. Vincent, another thing that somebody said, we need a wrong figure. Don't use 90 something, 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 something. Give me a wrong figure so we could easily understand the cost breakdown. So I say, all right, cool. So this episode, we're using a round figure. In St. Vincent, most people, when they message you, they say, I'm looking for a house. They say, I want a house between 200,000 to 250. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using 250 as our breakdown value. So the first part of the video, we're going to look at buying a house, $250,000, and the costs associated with buying a house at that price. The next part of the video, I'm going to be breaking down what is the difference between buying a house and building a house. What are the advantages and disadvantages of both? And then the third part of the video, I'm going to tell you, Vincentians, you need to sell your house and stop holding on to the house. Why would I say that? What do I mean? Find out later on in the video. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the first part. Buying a house for $250,000. All right, so let's start with the breakdown. So we already agree we're using $250,000. Now, for valuations, valuations are on a scale. Now, every valuator might is not a fixed scale, like how legal work has guidelines as to how you price the legal work valuations is a bit a bit of a gray area there is a sometimes a standard that people go with and then people choose their own scale so i know when my father used to do valuations a house for 250 you would have charged around 550. Um, as you go up in value the price changes so it could go up to all 1200 dollars for a property over a million dollars so land starts around four hundred dollars property you could start around 550 comfortably thinking budget in your mind 550 for evaluation all right so the deed search deed search again we come in three hundred dollars so let's go 250 valuation 500 all right then let's go to do some maths now for the deed and the mortgage uh, somebody who worked in a lawyer's office messaged me and said, I love your calculations for the deed and the mortgage, but there's something that you need to factor in also. There are some lawyers who actually charge VAT on their legal work. So that also adds a little variation when it comes to pricing out the deed and the mortgage. 
So yeah, if you're going to a lawyer that is charging VAT, expect it to be a higher price than what I'm going to be quoting you right now. All right, so to do a deed on a mortgage, the first 50,000 is $3,000. And then after that, which will be 200,000, it will be 200,000 times 1.5%. That will equal to $3,000. So at the end of it all, you're going to be paying $6,000 for the deed, and the same calculation will be for the mortgage. Every bank allows you to do your deed, not banks, financial institutions. But your mortgage must be done by their stipulated legal officer, their lawyer. So, if you might know a friend who might say, boy, $6,000, may you go back way back. You know, a family member who might charge you a small money. You could save some money on your deed work by going to them and getting a, a reduced rate. All right, so then you've calculated your valuation, you've calculated your, your deed search, you have the mortgage, you have the deed. Now the government have to come into play. The government takes 5% from the buyer and 5% from the seller. So, hmm, 5% of $250,000 is $12,500. And we, when we get down to the end of the process now, you have to now register this deed. And that calculation is you use the rounded figure, which would be 250, you minus $15, which will take you to 235. And then you take that 235 and you multiply it by 2.5. That gives you $587.50. And then you take that figure and you plus $50. Five, $587.50 plus $50, that will give you $637.50. All right, so the final figure for in terms of the additional cost that you will have to incur is $25,937.50. So if you see a property on the market and you're going to pay $250,000, for that property, your final figure will be $275,937.50. So, if you actually want to spend $250 for everything, then you'll have to look at, I will, a rough, rough estimate, you might be looking at $225 if you want to stay within that $250 range. So if 250 is your hard cap, I don't want to spend more than 250, then you'll have to reduce your budget when you're looking for the actual property to try to get it at 225. And remember, if you, you're going to be buying a property that's worth 250 and you're going to offer 225, if the, if the, if the government values it at 250, then you're going to still have to pay the heavy stamp duty of twelve thousand five hundred. So it, it might take you over the two fifty. All right. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. So my people, that is the breakdown of buying a property that is being sold at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. All right. So let's move into the next portion of this video: buying a piece of land versus buying a finished house. What are the advantages of, of both sides of the spectrum? Now, a lot of women will tell you, I want to build my own house because I could decide how my kitchen going, how my living room going, how my bathroom going. Men, we tend not to care. Just give us a house, you have a bed in there, you could lie down, you could go in the kitchen and open the fridge, we are good. But women want to make sure they could decorate here, they could fix it. So, that's the advantage. You can decide exactly how you want your house laid out. Second advantage, when you're buying a full house, you will pay the government more money. If you're buying and building, you will pay the government less money because your stamp duty will be paid on the land and not the final product. So if you buy a piece of land, you find a piece of, piece of land for $50,000, it is much cheaper when the 5% comes out versus $250,000 when you're paying the stamp duty. So, advantage number two. One, 
you get to desi you design it all how you want it. Two, you pay the government less money. Now, the other advantage is the house is new. Now, when you think about, when you're mentally thinking about buying or building a house, you need to keep this very critical point in mind. If I am buying a property, I need to know the age of this property because every single property, as soon as it's done, as soon as you put this final piece of paint on a property, the building starts to devalue. The land could increase in value, but the house itself would decrease in value. So when you're going to buy a property, you need to say, okay, where is this property in terms of my age timeline? And that age timeline, you have to factor in a few things. How far away is this property from needing to change the windows? How far away is this property from needing to change the roof? You need to factor in all of these things. I will give, let's say, 20 years. Between 20 to maybe 25 years before you need to do a complete roof change. So you have to say in your mind, okay, how far away is that change? So if I'm buying a property to, for 250 versus me building one for 250 I might get a better deal, I might get a bigger house at the 250 because I'm buying because the person might want to get rid of it. Um, the market might be bad so it's a buyer's market so I could get it for cheap. But then you have to know, be, do some projections. How, when was this house built? Was it five years ago? Was it 10 years ago? Was it 20 years ago? What, are, what is going to be my maintenance cost in the long run? Do I have to run back to the bank and borrow another $50,000 in, in a short space of time to redo the windows, to do the, the roof? To patch up here patch up there all of these things must be factored in when you're looking at buying a house versus building a house all right so what are the advantages of of buying now so we so building it's new you don't have to think about maintenance for a very long time you could decide exactly what you want to do with the house in terms of the rooms and the government stamp duty is very much reduced because you're paying tax the government stamp duty on the land and not the entire finished house all right so looking at buying a finished house what could be the possible advantages if you get a property that is not very old so you don't project any sort of maintenance on that property for a while or you're buying a property that is a fixer-upper and you're getting an amazing deal on that property, go for it. Buying a property that is not very old, fixer-upper, great deal, great location. For example, let's say you want to build an apartment and there's an old house on the side of the road, broken down. You could get a good deal on that property and you could start to get some rent income. That's a, that's a no-brainer. All right. So, what are the other advantages of buying a finished property? The time. Building a home. One of the disadvantages of building a home is, unfortunately in St. Vincent, a lot of people get problems with contractors. They borrow a set of money, the contractor tell them, yes, this could build this house. And then, somewhere along the line, problems arise. The 250 that you borrowed done and the house is nowhere to be seen. That is one of the main deterrents of people wanting to build and rather go and buy a property, unfortunately. So when you're looking at, okay, the stress of having to literally be harking over my contractor to make sure that he's not taking my materials and build another house for himself or he or he or she, women could be contractors too, or they're not taking the money and trying to finish a house that they promised another client and they're using your monies to finish that other house. So there's a, there's a scare factor when it comes to building a property. As much as you love the newness, as much as you love the total control over your design, that a lot of people in St. Vincent have put up into that problem of seeing their money 
wasted and they're not getting the property that they were supposed to get. So that's one of the main advantages of buying a home. You move into that home, you don't have to face those challenges. You move in quick, fast, you don't have to wait six to eight months. You don't have to deal with the weather. You don't have to deal with all of those problems. So, but the disadvantages, you have to now make sure that you see, project. Is this house going to need X number of dollars? I have to go back to the bank and borrow more money again. And I have to go through the same contractor dealing with the contractor to change the roof, change the windows, fix the, the foundation. So you have to balance it, balance it, and know exactly what you're doing, the advantage of and disadvantage of each side of the spectrum. All right, folks. So if you are me, what I do, I love my spreadsheet. I love my data. I see a property I might like. I look at the, the numbers. I look at the raw numbers. I say, okay, this is what I want to do with it. This is what it's going to cost me. Where is it on the timeline? I do all of my data analysis to make a good decision. And you could call me and I could help you to decide if that is a good investment. No. There are a lot of incentions who went to the bank, they borrowed some money, they built a house in an area that was not fully developed. 20 years passed, the area booming. Imagine you building a property in Queens Drive before it was Queens Drive, before the place turned hot. The land was cheap. 20 years ago, house, your neighbor helped you build a house, so you build a house cheap. They have a small loan on it still. People of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is okay to sell your house and move on. A lot of incentions hold on to homes when you do not need to. If you in 2020 live in an area, I have a house, I, have a, I, have, I drive to Villa. I see people still have little boat house in Villa and they're sitting down on $18 a square foot land. Sell the land and build a better house. So you have to know, no. What is my property valued? If I'm going to be, have, can't move around in a little matches box house and I am sitting on so much value of land, why not sell that property, buy a smaller piece of land, build a nice house, and you might not even have to go to the bank to borrow any money. So you could remove all your debts on terms of your mortgage and build a house cash. So you need to be always cognizant of that. If I was only to our community and that community has now developed into something beautiful, weigh out your options, sell that property and move on. You don't have to hold on to a property for the rest of your life. Use the advantages of being forced to a good neighborhood. All right, folks, that has been another episode of Caribbean Dreams TV. Next episode, we're talking about a really, really nice investment. You are going to love this episode. I think it's pretty cool. So, how are we doing? How are we doing? People stop it. I'm going to property. I love what we're doing. I just want to say thank you for sticking with us and looking at our episodes and providing feedback. If you have any, any feedback you want to provide, you'll say, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. Just shout me. Call me. 492-6128. Let's talk about it. Let's make this show the best possible show for real estate in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we out. Oh my God.